Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace your water pump on 3.5 Toyota Lexus engines. So it's either front wheel drive, all wheel drive, or same steps will apply to like GS six cylinder, AS, Tacoma, and possibly others. But specifications will be specifically, you know, the torque numbers and so on will be specifically applicable to front wheel drive uh, and all wheel drive uh, Toyota and Lexus vehicles. So, to change your water pump, these are the things you're going to need. So, the car is almost 11 years old. It started to leak the water pump, and I made a separate video where and how to diagnose. So, this is the water pump. This is brand new original OEM, came in a box. And the pump is made actually here in US according to the box and uh, for those of you that are curious it actually says Toyota and then it says Isen. it doesn't say where it's made on the pump but it says on the box so the pump came with two o-rings one o-ring for the crossover pipe that small one and the big one is for your uh, thermostat housing not for the thermostat but housing itself that attaches there the o-ring so so it's all came in uh these are the lowest prices that i found i'll post the links uh, for the stuff you're gonna need uh, a belt you're gonna need a brand new brand new belt because it's you know 10 years old it's time to replace you're gonna need a tread lock yes you're gonna need that i'm gonna show you how to replace your pump per using toyota uh, repair service specifications. It's not gonna be a hack job. It's not gonna be you know one of those quick and easy get done in a couple hours, you know, a shady type of work. No, it's gonna be a quality work that once you do it, it's gonna be last time you're gonna be doing it until the pump fills again. While I'm here, because I gotta put remove a lot of bolts. This is we're talking about about 50 bolts to remove bolts and nuts all together so there's a lot of bolts to remove to get this job done so might as well since I am there I'm gonna replace a thermostat because to remove a thermostat it's not that easy to get to those couple bolts but while I'm there might as well do it a gasket so there's a gasket there's a thermostat part number I'll post the links and again it's 10 years old might as well replace the cap too radiator cap yes it adds the cost but you want to make sure that everything is working. You know, in 10 years old, in 10 years, car experience enough. You know, the springs, they wear out, you know, from constantly opening and closing, opening and closing. It's not the same pressure, unless you, you have the means of testing the pressure cap, uh, radiator cap, making sure it's functioning. If you have those, the means of doing it and knowing that it's going to be 100% working, then you can leave it, you know what I mean? I prefer to replace it now. So I don't have to touch this again in the next... A minimum 10 years maybe 15 maybe 20 years because I have no plans to replace this car no plans uh, half of its life or well, five years and spent this car spent in Florida and the next six six five and a half years not five months five years of its life it's spent in Florida and then next five and a half six years it's been up north but I've been undercoating this car so it's clean I'll probably make a video one day and you'll see actually in this video the underneath how clean even though I do not wash my cars underneath in the winter time so uh, let me show you the first step into you know so I'll show you step by step keep in mind that 50% of the work replacing the pump is removing the parts properly 50% the next 50% is installing and torquing per factory specifications so let's jump in to the next step and I will show you how to do it so this, <clears throat> these are the steps these are the steps to to follow to remove your pump remove the plastic uh, keep the cap until it start put draining because once it drains most of the time see the expansion tank is empty pretty much because it pulls a vacuum and uh, and drains all the coolant so right there is the plug See if I can zoom in. To get to this plug, you gotta do it from underneath. That plastic trim, there's bolts, 10 mil bolts, there's a couple of clips. You can actually remove those bolts, remove the clips, pull the panel out to get to the to get to the bolts. So right there. 
clips uh, tell me bolt screw kind of a thing and if you break the clips don't worry about you can pick up similar or same clips low some deeper online eBay has it. Uh, remove the plug and let it drain that's these are these are the initial steps of draining the coolant next step is to lift the passenger side remove the wheel so this is my setup using a floor jack I did put a board underneath frame rail if you want to call and then you know I prefer wooden blocks more surface area more stable than the jack stands I don't like putting stuff underneath here you know it's hard to even show you the jacking points because you know metal against metal on a jack and just scrapes the paint off and it rusts underneath there nothing gets scratched nothing gets nothing gets you know ruined it or anything like that and once you lift this side passenger side you, the, the more coolant will come out as you can hear it's still running even though it stopped when the when vehicle was you know on all four wheels and now it's running more so there is a couple more bolts let me show you that I'm gonna start removing so one right there one right there to remove this plastic thing so you're gonna have access to the pulleys and other stuff up there water pump better access and then you can actually you know tilt it to the side there might be something else up there that will prevent from getting in there or not as you can see you know car is like the body the frame parts it's all wet kind of you know black it's an H oil engine support rusted you know, not rusted you know surface rust but everything else look at how nice because I apply an H oil every year do touch ups and you know but I never wash my car underneath look how clean rust free even though it's almost 11 years old and you can tell by the brakes you know what I mean that this is now you're not gonna see stuff like this down south but only up north so while we're draining like I said I'm gonna remove that and start showing you guys more stuff next step after tire and wheel shield start removing those size 14 bolts there is bolt here and there is two nuts there so these are should be removed too and probably this bracket here first careful brake lines so you don't damage leave the bolts there just so you don't forget which bolt goes where because they are different lengths some some are the same but it's better to it's better to leave everything in once put it aside so next step is to remove this uh, whatever that is called there is two bolts size 14 one there one up there and there's one up there, there's three actually. So, you can remove the bolts, but you can't remove the bracket because of this ABS pump. So what we have to do, we have to lift the engine up. So, even though the instruction doesn't say to remove that bolt or that mount up there, the middle one, but I'm just gonna loosen up a little bit because since the engine will have to go up, so and I'm not sure how much engine mounts there is a flex there is a play you know what I mean and I don't want to damage them either a lot of people just remove just stop that this top bolt but service manual repair manual for the other calls it to remove three bolts underneath let me show you that. so that's one of them right there seven size 17 
There is plastic plug. There's one there and there's one up there. These are the plastic caps that you remove to have access. They could be rusted. So I'll loosen them up and uh, that's following the factory recommended procedure where they receive the bolt. So a lot of people next thing I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is start lifting the engine up. Service manual says do not put anything underneath the oil pan. Use space between engine and transmission to lift. Why? Why not oil pan? Well, because there is an oil pickup tube there. And you can, you know, uh, you can damage the tube. So, this bracket came out finally. You gotta lift the engine. It's pretty good. And then wiggle a couple bolts. You know, those two bolts have to wiggle out. And that bolt right there. And then the bracket came out, of course. Those top ones and the side one are shorter ones. But not an easy task because of this ABS unit here. It definitely it takes some patience. And when you lift them, be careful. Bolts are not popping out or kind of came out loose, so you don't damage those uh, AC lines, as you can see right there. They're kind of in a way. So now we're going to remove this crossover pipe. This is how much the bolt sticking out. So pretty much. Yeah, pretty much all the threads has to be, has to be all the way up. So to remove this thermostat slash crossover pipe, you gotta remove there's three, three, two bolts and a nut. One here, one underneath, and one, one up. There's a nut up there, a bolt there, and a bolt here. There's a hose clamp up there. Gotta remove the hose clamp and remove that hose. So the thermostat housing or crossover power, whatever it's called, it's loose. As you can see. So I want to show you something. This is the clamp. I use this clamp is to as a for the leverage to remove the hose. So basically I would put it on the edge of the hose and kind of like that. Same thing on this side I tried to show I can, you know what I mean. I don't want to scratch this pipe. So against the edge, the edge kind of applying leverage. See if I can camera get the camera to focus. Kind of in that direction. See, same thing again, like a leverage. You know what I mean? Prying it, so I can. And then it's once it starts going, then it continues. You know, continue kind of left, right, left, right. Don't scratch the pipe. Take your time. No in a hurry. This clamp here, the way it is, it helps. To give a leverage for the screwdriver so I'm gonna leave this as this and I'm gonna replace the thermostat here so now next step is start removing the pulleys one of them if I'm not mistaken second one down below is the left top one is the right hand the bottom one is the left hand so there is like three pulleys we have to remove so there is Two types of pulleys. Top pulley is the right hand, you mean normal bolt. Bottom pulley with the tensioner, it's the left hand. So meaning, if you go right clock, you're gonna uh, unscrew the bolt. Same thing, there is a pulley behind this. There's another uh, idler pulley, normal right hand. So you gotta remove all of this. So before you remove the belt, you got a tensioner. There's a tensioner. You gotta kind of release it right there. And you you gotta release the tensioner, belt tensioner, from underneath. Instruction says put a 5 mil Allen key in a hole for the belt tensioner.
So there you go. Now the belt is loose and I can remove the belt and start removing uh, pulleys. Remember, belt tensioner pulley is left hand, all other two other two pulleys are right hand. So left hand means like you would it's a counterclockwise. It's a clock left hand means clockwise to unscrew the bolt. Before you remove the pulley, take a pictures how everything loops around where, where the belt goes, you know, under which pulley and so on. So that way, when you have to install it, you know what goes where. Without struggling and... Even the bolt for the tensioner has letter L. To let you know, it's a left hand counterclockwise. <clears throat> so now, now we're gonna use the special tool, Apostle Links, and we're gonna break the loose bolts on a on a pulleys. So you hold the pulley, you can use any tools, I'll post a link for my tool, that works for me, but you can use anything. Break those bolts off, remove the pulley, and go from there. So all the bolts are loose now, now I'm gonna start pulling one by one. This is the outline of new water pump. Every bolt that you remove, you put it back in the same spot. It will make your life so much easier put the pump back you know you remove this bolt from the old pump put it back here and then when you start putting those bolts back because I'll show you because you have to put a Loctite on some of these bolts there are different torques some of these bolts surprisingly so this is something that is worth doing it making this outline putting a couple of holes for each bolt and then once you know one out put it here in the cardboard so that way you don't mess it up and use the older bolt the same length and same uh, sizes. So to remove the pump you got to lift the engine just like you would do for the bracket here and so on. I was not able to separate pulley from the pump so I was able to remove both at the same time. Maybe I have to lift the engine higher, I don't know. But it works for me that way. So this is the old gasket. I want you guys to notice something. Rust. 10 years on the coolant, almost 11. My advice, don't push it. Especially for those of you that guys live in a hot climate. Don't push it past, I don't know, change often. 7 years if it's brand new vehicle, if it's used. Either do coolant analysis or change every 5 max, maybe 4 years. So this is it, this is the new and the old pump, as you can see a little bit difference for the pulley attaches is different, looks like they did some weight reduction. So I have cleaned the threads for each bolt in this water pump pattern because bolts had so much uh, caulking the grey factory sealant on them, so I use a break parts cleaner and brush I was able to clean it. Something to keep in mind, you see the blue dot? There is some up there. These bolts, you're supposed to replace them. Or, if you don't replace them, clean them because the thread will have some factory thread lock. Thread lock, some kind of lock or some kind of glue. So, this is what I'm using that I found alternative blue. You know, put a little bit, read the instructions, and go. And then, I'm going to show you something, torquing. So this is the pump. As you can see, these are the bolts. A, B, bolts. You can read the note. It says, it says to use some kind of thread locker or adhesive. 16 bolts. There is a numbers you can torque. Keep in mind some of those bolts may not be accessible with a torque wrench to torque them. 
uh, for the pulley, pump pulley. Uh, clean, ch just check, make sure what I've found is I'm gonna just to take the sharp rag and wipe the surface. There is no residue from the old gasket. It's just some of the oxidation from the aluminum and it's kind of flaking off. So I'll wipe it clean, uh, put the gasket on first. Yes, put the gasket on first and I will show you in this video. Well, that's how you install the water pump, as you saw it. Lift it up, you know, hold it with one bolt, uh, gasket up there, any bolts, and then once you, you saw it, I don't know how much you see it or not, but with a pulley, you kind of insert everything there, and when you clean the bolts, they're so easy to start by hand. Should be, yes, right there. When the threads are clean, you can easily start them with no problems. That's why it's very important to clean the threads, remove all the factory glue or whatever it might be. So this is the setup I had to use in some one case to torque the bolt and of course I did the math according to the torque wrench specs because of the extra extension. But I was able to reach all the bolts Sometimes use an extension, you know, because it's hard to reach, but otherwise I was able to reach all the bolts and torque them. So now I'm going to torque the, see if I can torque a uh, water pump pulley. So using a pick or something, you can put in one of the holes and see if you can align it. Something trick, first bolt, you know what I mean, you see it. Because otherwise if you cannot see it, how are we going to... Yep, looks like I got the first bolt. Now we'll do all other bolts. So, you can even put a socket, the shallow socket on to torque the uh, bolts on the pulley. So the only way to torque this, you can do it from the bottom either. This cross member is in the way. So what's left? Using the wrenches, that's pretty much it. That's the only way. Well, now I'm gonna show you how to replace your thermostat. Remove those two 10, 10 millimeter bolts. Top and bottom. Put something underneath. I'm using old sheets. So that way any coolant is not spilling everywhere else. Remember the position of your thermostat because that's how you have to put it back. Remember the position of this thing here. This is, I'm not sure what this thing is called. And of that, put it in exactly the same way. There is a reason why they do it. Put new thermostat and they put new gasket. It's stuck up pretty good. So we might have to do it from the inside. Oh. Even from the inside it's stuck. So what we're gonna do is to take a screwdriver jam it and carefully pry it up. Rubber gasket here. Yeah. And if there's any surface oxidation just either wipe it clean or you know use so I'm gonna remember position so we can put it back the same way. So the new thermostat is, is of course loose. So be careful when you insert bolt so it doesn't twist. Keep in mind, never use lubricants of any kind. If you want to loop something on a coolant system, use the coolant itself. Never contaminate. Adding a grease is the wrong thing to do. You're contaminating the coolant and you're making it short, a life shorter. You're changing the chemistry, it's like opening up radiator cap and dropping the uh, same amount of grease into the coolant. How smart is that? You think that's going to do anything good? Of course not. It's not going to do anything good. Keep that in mind. A lot of people do it. You'll never see any instructions. 
in the manufacturing. So how much to torque the bolts? Seven foot pounds or, or ten newton meters. Those two nuts for a thermostat. So next step now to install pulleys. Then once you put all the pulleys, I'm gonna show you how the torque specs. You wanna lock this one with a pin from underneath so you can uh, so you can put the belt on so the tensioner has to be locked with that allen wrench or some kind of pin so you can uh, put the belt on so and then once that we can put the thermostat housing back in its place because we put the thermostat housing then we have less room to walk because it's hosing its way and so on this is the perfect timing So these are the specs for the left hand pulley, 32 foot pounds and the other two are 40 foot pounds pulleys. And then for that bracket, engine bracket, the top bracket, this is what it looks like. Looks like these are the numbers. Let me double check. Yep. So here's the specs. 40, 40 foot pounds. Yep, 40 foot pounds. Quick tip how to install this serpentine belt. Put the belt everywhere where it should be and then last pulley that you want to wrap it around is your alternator pulley. That makes it so much easier. You still have to pull on a tensioner to release it even more with a pin inside. Still not enough. So I put the wrench size 14 and the last place is alternator. That seems to be working great for me. And here is the layout of the belt I want to show you. So this is the layout and this is the instructions. You can read on your own. So now the thermostat housing is going to be being installed. Don't forget to replace the o-ring on that pipe. Put a new o-ring in there where the hole is for the thermostat housing. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm sure it's gonna be, not sure how easy, do not use any lube, any oil, grease, or whatever on those O-rings. If you wanna lube it, use coolant, use fresh coolant because it's, it's designed to, not to dry things up, but to lube it at the same time. So that's my advice to you guys. So we'll see how with that hose things gonna be going. We'll see if I can put the camera on and show you guys how I did. So I want you guys to notice something. Brand new O-ring right there. Holds on its own. No grease, no sealers or anything. And brand new there. I'm gonna put some antifreeze to lubricate that O-ring so it slides smoothly. We'll see how with the hose, I'm not sure yet. You know, removing was not easy task. Hopefully install will be easier. So that's pretty much the process. Keep an eye on that O-ring and just keep, keep sliding until it washes in here.
Looks like it's all the way in. So by tightening those bolts, we're gonna get this thing snug and then we'll torque it with a torque wrench if we can. So these are seven foot pounds and a nut. So to remove the hose, what I did is I kind of cracked it open there, used against the clamp, leverage, and same thing, kind of you know working it, pushing it, and then to slide it in, I used the pry bar and pushed in, and it just went in against the aluminum with no problems. So of course there are tools for removing this hose, which is I don't have it. Here is a quick tip. To install this bracket, it's a pain. You gotta be patient. Make sure you lift the engine, make sure your jack, what I showed you, is a good jack. Let me show you this. So this is, let's say this is how it is right now, this bracket. You do it is you put an angle like that. Just let me angle. Put the bolts in and then slowly wiggle in the bolts and you lower it and goes in like that. Same thing, getting out. Here is something I want to give you guys a few tips. Now I'm ready to torque those bolts. Let me show you this brand of so socket Sonics, if I'm pronouncing correctly. Very helpful in places like that bracket, many, many places where you would put something like that and you unscrew it. Because you can put a ratchet initially, you know. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to torque it some of this. Yeah, probably will be able to torque it with a torque wrench. But once the bolt comes out too far enough, you can't use a ratchet. You're at a point where this is your solution, you know what I mean? There's many places like that. I was able to use it. Uh, it's just a little bit extra. It helps. So, to torque those bolts, these are the numbers. 40 foot pounds and it shows points you in that right there keep in mind that bracket that I showed you earlier not this that one right there it's hard there's a couple bolts or nuts or actually bolts you won't be able to torque it by a torque wrench just there is no room unless you have some kind of special attachments this here right here this one two three four and those other bolts here is the here is the instructions 28 foot pounds four bolts one two three four that's correct and then the bracket same thing Bolt 28 knots 17. And that's pretty much wraps up this portion on top of the engine. Then we'll be going underneath and torquing it engine mounts 6 bolts. 3 up front, 3 on the side or side and front. And then putting everything back together. Are they adding coolant and checking everything? So if you remove the top nut nuts of the engine mount like it's shown there these are the torque numbers 70, 64 for the front ones, side ones keep that in mind but if you remove just underneath per instructions the three on the passenger side, three up front then the numbers will be different so after you close the valve at the bottom of the radiator you can start filling up after you're done with everything you know you can use factory or you can use aftermarket. I prefer aftermarket. Why I don't like I use factory. You see that right there pinkish color? Well, that pinkish color leaves a build-up actually on the inside of the engine. I have noticed on the water pump. And any build-up on the inside of the uh, cooling system adds, prevents proper heat transfer. So, that's why I'm not using it. I don't know why. I'm gonna give a try to uh, MCL coolant and I'm gonna do some testing. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some of the results. We're gonna put it to the test and see how much residue MSOIL leaves versus factory OEM. 
Uh, so basically, the way you do, you just add slowly to the radiator until it's full. You add to the coolant about three quarter. You run it until the thermostat opens up. Uh, about warms up for a little bit, then you will, you know, give a gas and hold it at 2,000 RPM. So that way you can speed up the process. You allow the thermostat to open up and circulate the coolant, get the air out. You're going to hear bubbles three or four days while you drive inside, which is normal for the air to come out. Just watch your temperature. Make sure there is no big pocket somewhere air trapped and it's overheating. You know what I mean? Then you got to do, do some other things to get the air out of the system. But otherwise... That should not be an issue. Yes, about three or four days that I was hearing the bubbles, you know what I mean? You start, you can hear it driving, and it's just circulating, you know, trying to get this air out of the system. So that's pretty much how it works. Uh, don't be surprised or alarmed by this. So that's how you replace the water pump and you add the coolant. Uh, simple, straightforward, takes time, but, you know, if you believe in quality, you can do it yourself. If you have the tools, if you don't have the tools, then it's a different story. So, thanks for watching. Share this video with others. Give me a thumbs up. And have an awesome day.